ever heard of a fire protection engineer? Yeah? Fire protection engineers is a special type of firefighting, a uh, special type of engineer that help firefighters do their job. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some concepts that fire protection engineers use in order to help firefighters. And actually, some of these you can take home as safety messages for yourself and for your family. So, uh, what we'll talk about this morning is, uh, well, I guess we'll just talk about heat transfer. Anyone know what heat transfer is? Ooh. Transfer of heat. Very good. We got an A student right there. I bet every one of you has heard what heat transfer is. When you have left the door open in the middle of the winter and your mom says, stop letting all the heat out. Right? That's heat transfer. Well, also maybe in the winter when she says, stop letting all the cold air out. But you can tell her after this that that's wrong or you're dead. Heat always goes from a high temperature to a low temperature. And what you're going to see in this fire is the transfer of heat is going to cause the generation or it's going to cause the growth of the fire from one location to multiple different locations. There's three different ways that heat can move from one place to the other. One of the easiest to understand is radiation. Are we feeling radiant heat right now? Yes. What's that from? Sun. The sun. And remember sat by a campfire? Right? You're not touching the campfire, you're not sitting on top of the campfire, but you can feel it. It's called an electromagnetic wave. The other way that we can transfer heat is conduction. You want to know what that is? Touching it. Touching it, right? So I'm going to grab the hot pan. Right. So for in terms of uh, fire safety, if you're in a building that's on fire, how can you tell if there's fire behind a door? What do you do? Touch it. Right. And that's just by using conduction to determine whether or not heat is going to transfer into your hand and it's hot behind there. When we move on to the uh, burn cell, we're going to have, have two different demonstrations here. This first one, you'll see how conduction, some of you in the front here will feel the radiation of the heat coming out. The radiation con convection, which is movement through gases, will cause that fire to grow and to move throughout that structure. When we have the sprinkler here, that convection allows the sprinkler system to go off. It transfers heat to the sprinkler system, the glass bulb in there gets hot, that heat conducts to the, the fluid that's in there, and it breaks open. And we use just simple concepts of convection and conduction to protect us from fire. So you'll see the huge differences between the two of these. All right, so I'm going to turn it over now to uh, Eddie Bain. Um, actually, before I do that, I'd like everyone to give a nice round of applause for Urbana Fire Department for coming out here. Uh, Chief Mike Dilley has done a great job helping us out. Engineer Jeff Orr over there is uh, running the fire truck, making sure we have enough water out here. And we've got firefighters here from Urbana, okay? So, I'll turn it over to Eddie. All right, you're going to witness today the destructive power of fire. You know, a lot of times people you kind of start acting silly and goofy. And, oh, yeah, it's a fire. It's exciting. Fire is very, very dangerous. And an uncontrolled fire like we're going to show you today will not only hurt you, it'll come after you and try and kill you. This is not a game, it's not a joke. It's very, very serious business, fire business and the fire safety. That's why we want you to make sure you have a smoke alarm at home and you have an escape plan because fire doesn't wait for you, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna light a fire. It'll start in newspaper in a wastebasket by our chair. And then I need somebody to be a timer for me. Once I light the fire, watch your watch. And we'll ask you, let you know, you know, about when a minute is or about when two minutes is. And we'll see how long this thing takes, all right? Okay, here we go. So very quickly, the smoke alarm is detecting the products of combustion. And when a smoke alarm activates when a building, when you're in a building, that's when you need to begin to leave the building. You still have time to safely escape. Make sure you have a smoke alarm. Make sure it has good batteries. Make sure it's working.
Okay, we've got about a hundred degree ceiling temperature in here. You can see our fire plume is starting to grow. The plume is the column of fire that's developing. That column will continue to develop until it hits the ceiling. And then the seal will bank across the ceiling. Now this fire is also creating a lot of poison, particularly carbon monoxide. Very, very deadly. We're out here in this beautiful day, fresh air, that's not a problem. Inside a home or inside a building, that's what kills people. You begin to see a layer developing about this height. It's about 200 degrees on the ceiling now. We're monitoring these temperatures over here with instruments. And that'll continue to bank down that radiated heat and these fire gases that are being produced. That's combustible. These gases, carbon monoxide is combustible. And so in a few moments, we'll see that layer of gas actually catch on fire. All right, the chair is beginning to burn now. So many of our products in our homes are made of plastics or foam rubber type materials. They burn very, very hot and they're characteristic smoke, the very, very black poisonous smoke that you see. We're at about two minutes. All right, this is about the time in a residential fire when a residential fire gets discovered. So a call has to be made to a 911 center or a fire department, and then the fire department begins its response to arrive at this fire. We're about 350 degrees on the ceiling. That's hot enough to bake stuff. And we're about 200 degrees down here on the floor. 700 degrees on the ceiling. The temperature's climbing very, very fast. 1400 degrees Fahrenheit on the ceiling. And you begin to see the fire lapping out. It's heating up all those gases and all that smoke that's up there. Wow. <laughs> It's about 500 degrees on the floor. You can't survive in this room much much longer. Wow. We're about three minutes into the fire. Tornado? We're about 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit on the floor. You see the carpet. Everything in the room now has been heated to its ignition temperature. You should put it out. This is what we call flashover. You cannot survive in that room. A firefighter will not survive in that room. Your gear does not make you fireproof. You can't survive. Everything in the room now is on fire. Okay, go ahead and hit it. You can feel that radiant heat coming off, off on that. That's it. That didn't take much water to break it off, though. And you saw that black smoke turn to white steam very quickly. When they put water on the fire, that steam actually helps suppress the fire. The fire of it goes out very, very quickly when the water is applied correctly like we're doing here today. We'll let that cool off for just a minute. Say this is worth missing class? You'll be able to see in there, everything in there is burned up. Now that took what, three and a half minutes? Four minutes tops. That's why it's so critical when you first hear that smoke alarm to start getting out. You don't have to be a firefighter. You don't have to worry about getting all your stuff. Just get out because as you've seen, you may not have much time. Could you feel the radiated heat coming out over on you over here? In a bigger structure, that's what sets other things on fire, down the hall and down the way. Those of you that have businesses or in schools, that's why fire inspectors are always talking to you about closing fire doors. What the fire door does is help stop the spread of that smoke and stop the spread of that heat. That's why fire doors, not just to stop fire, but to stop uh, the smoke and...